Phyllis Weiner. This is Phyllis Weiner. There she is. There she is. Right there. Well, I'm looking through this book that you brought me about pioneer modernists. I think that's what it's called. Yep. Minnesota's first generation of women artists. Well, it's an interesting, it's a, it's a, a very interesting book, and uh, um, I, I, of, of these artists that she has selected, there's the first generation of women artists, I, who was probably second or third generation of women artists, the ones that I knew from this group uh, uh, per, that I knew personally were Joe Lutz Rollins and, um, El and to some extent Elsa Gemini. Okay. Elsa Gemini was in Artist Equity and she was oh. uh, quite, uh, well she, she, she was just very much respected by everybody because Elsa, in the first place Elsa Gemini was a real lady. Everybody respected her work, which she had done with um, a, a, a great, she did a great many murals all over the city. I, I suppose that probably some of them were with WPA. Uh, Joe Lutz Rollins taught at the university mm -hmm. and um, I, uh, I, I did teach at the university uh, a sketch, uh, a, a drawing class at night, uh, part of the adjunct faculty. Mm -hmm. And uh, she and I, uh, and my husband, uh, Alan Downs, who was my husband at that time, was um, in, the, in the university f art faculty. So I got to know her through through him, I suppose, and, and um, uh, she she didn't drive. Hmm. I don't know whether she couldn't drive or whether she just didn't. But at any rate, she hired, she got a she got a grant. It was I I, I suspect it was a, a WPA grant, but I don't really I'm not sure about that. It might have been a Minnesota grant of some kind, but she had a grant to uh, record towns along the Mississippi. Hmm. And she's a watercolor painter. So she hired me at what was a very fair stipend to go with her, to drive her down the Mississippi. And we spent, I think, I believe we were, did, did it about two or three weeks. Hmm. It was quite a long time. And uh, I, uh, I, I didn't have any children at the time, so I was free to go. And then I could paint too, watercolor too, but I couldn't do it nearly as well as she could. She took about one hour to record whatever she was going to record, and she did it beautifully, you know. She, she knew what she was doing. And uh, well, we had some, we really had some very nice times together, Joe Lutz Rollins and I. I. I always look, I've always looked back on that as one of the most, really one of the most pleasant experiences of my life. Mm. Uh, Francis Greenman was probably the most professionally developed and um, uh, well, I don't know, maybe I would just say the, high, the highest grade painter uh -huh. of the whole bunch, really. Uh, she'd been trained, I think, in, if I'm, I'm not sure about this, but I think she was trained in both Paris and New York. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, she was very good. She was also, uh, uh, had a very professional attitude toward, toward, toward um, her work and her life. 
And um, when I remarried, Alan and I were divorced. And, and when I remarried and changed my name, she really got after me. <laughs> she scolded me very, very much. And, um, well, I don't know. I, at the time, I, I wasn't I wasn't particularly career-minded, hmm. you know. I was in art because I loved it, mm -hmm. and, I, and it was something I could do. But I didn't think of myself as having a career in art. Now that may sound very strange, and maybe people won't believe me, but that was that was kind of uh -huh. true of a lot of artists in those days. Not only not only women, mm -hmm. but probably particularly women. Evelyn Raymond, I don't. She she was not, so far as I know, ever supportive of women, any of the women artist groups mm -hmm. that I, that I know anything mm -hmm. about. In fact, she uh, we always considered. I think I I felt at any rate mm -hmm. that she held held herself apart from women's organizations, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, from us in, at Warren in particular. Hmm. Warren was an organization, uh, do I need, I suppose I should say what that was, women's art organiz organization of uh, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we were, we had um, a large membership and uh, we, you were voted in, but all, really almost anyone who wanted to, they, when they, after they opened the gallery, they existed before. Oh. And I was one of the founding members of the organization before they opened the gallery. Oh. But after they, when they opened the gallery, I couldn't, I couldn't join the gallery, or I didn't, I didn't think I could, because I was already represented by um, a, a two uh, ga galleries, private galleries. One of them was uh, uh, Cone. Last week I was at the Walker in the archives department and I found that the Walker owns two of your paintings and that you had had 14 shows at the Walker. Can you, can you tell me anything about your recollection of, you were teaching at the Walker in the mm -hmm. school, I remember that. Well, I think the first of one of those shows was something they had called the Biennials. Of, um, those were, the Biennials were shows that you had to be voted in. What, what do you call that? They were selected. Juried exhibitions. They're juried exhibitions. They were juried exhibitions. And I was in a lot of those. I got prizes in some of those. I don't see any I don't see anything noticed here about my awards, but I got several awards. Um, they were selected by different uh, Usually by by different jurors from out of town. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think that if I'm I may be wrong about this, but I don't believe that they ever had local jurors. That would make they got sense to, because they really wanted to. Uh, in the first place, I think they thought that might seem more fair, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I always kind of wondered if it did. I kind of always suspected that the, the board members of the Walker might have stepped in and said, wait a minute, you left out so-and-so who was really some a big supporter of the Walker. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just my suspicious yeah. nature. <laughs> I, I didn't develop that suspicious nature until I got much, much older. Uh -huh. When I was young, I believed I believed people. Mm -hmm. 
And, um, well, we all know what happened the last few years in our country, and you don't believe people anymore. Mm -hmm. That's all. Um, yeah, I remember the Do John and Dorothy Root collection. Oh. Now, um, uh, John Root was a, was a, was, a, was a member of uh, Artists Equity, uh -huh. and um, he was quite actually uh, he he was he was quite influential and um, important in that organization. John was an artist, a good artist, who married Dorothy Root, who was a very wealthy woman. That didn't hurt anything. Mm -hmm. Anybody that knew him, <laughs> including me. <laughs> Are there any friendships that you can say date back? Catherine Nash. I see. Catherine Nash was a, a sculptor whom I met in New York at an artist equity at an artist equity convention, mm -hmm. and she was representing a chapter in from. Um, uh, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. well, it wasn't Omaha. What, what, Lincoln. Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska, where there was a the university. university. Yeah. And um, Catherine Nash um, and I became very, very tight friends. I think. Um, I think she kind of looked just uh, looked at me as somebody who needed to be guided. <laughs> <laughs> and was she ever right? And she got guided, she did. Guided, she did. And I was uh, and, uh, eternally and, indebted to her. Mm -hmm. Because I think for the first time she, she made me take my work seriously, really mm -hmm. seriously. And, and not just as something that I love to do, but as something that I contributed to the, to the world. I mean, she made you feel that way. So she was. She was a great guide. Was she in any of those exhibitions, do you think? Oh, sure. Oh, I'm sure. She was in everything. Oh. She was important. And she had a national yeah. reputa uh, reputation. She was a pioneer in her own right.